of training so it's a set group yeah so for the for the Monday meeting it's a supervisory meeting for those who 
or doing visits through their student ministry. So you have to go through a 50-hour training program to become a student minister. All right. So that's what that is. Yes. Yeah. And it's a one-on-one -on -one ministry with people who are going through difficult times. Yes. All right. Every well, needles at 1.30. Wednesday, ESL classes again at 10. Zappo Square at 6. And we have quite a group. 6.30, handbell, 7 o'clock. It's uh, the Bible study in Spanish, prayer and service. And 7.30, chancel choir. Thursday, 9 through 11, the foot pantry. The day circle meets at 10. The evening circle meets at 7. And then praising again next Saturday. Those are the announcements. Do we have any other announcements? That I, yes. Uh, we have one on Friday night. The, uh, all the adult Sunday school. Yes, it starts at 5 o'clock. It starts at 5 o'clock in the classrooms. Hmm? It's going to be in the such classroom. Room. We're going to have an instructor and inspiration. Okay, there's going to be an all-adult Sunday school class Valentine's party on <coughs> at 7 on Friday. No, it's 5 to 8.30 is that party. Well, no, 5.30, 5.30 to 8 is that party. All right. Right? Then you go around 5.30 to 8. There's signs in the classrooms. I don't know. I can't remember. Go right down there and look. All right, 5 o'clock. Somewhere like that. All right. We'll, we'll make sure everybody has the right information before we leave. Yes, Jerry. And for the food pantry, if you're just thinking about bringing some food, wait a while. Now, you can still be up Monday, uh, and we'll take that. For the food pantry. Take care of, but we are stocked up. We don't have any more room. Mm -hmm. right oh, oh, that's good. Thanks to the biggest trail of love. I will say, do I need to tell the group to ease off? Don't go back off for a minute and just send money. <laughs> I can tell them, and they will listen. That's all right. I think that uh, no word is good a good word. Yeah, okay. I would believe we go and the LCD group. Mm -hmm. All right, let's continue to worship. <laughs>
Too far. So lay down.
here for Penny Camperini. She has gone to rehab, but I can't find her. <laughs> and her phone, she has a cell phone, but the voice, the voice, what, the voice? Mailbox. Yeah. Mailbox is not being. So we will find out where she's at. Linda Eden went home after surgery on Monday and we pray that she continues to do well. Any other concerns, Joyce, to be shared? Well, uh, Marvin called me today. He can't find George. Hanson? Yeah. So he says, what hospital is he in? And I said, Marvin, I don't know. I don't, I don't know that he's in the hospital. He said, well, I like it. I want you to help me find him. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know where George is. We'll call George after the service and see if he's at home. He's at home. Right. And then we'll call Marvin and ease his mind. There we go. Dave? Our family of a friend of mine, Skip Rogers, who passed away on the 29th. Yeah. 75 years old. For the family of Skip Rogers, Lord in thy mercy. Yes. For Penny Camperini, Lord in thy mercy. Yes. For Linda Eden. Lord, in thy mercy. Hear our prayers. Amen. Many others. It's nice to have JJ. It's good to see you. Do we know what's going on with Damien? Damien, I didn't talk to him last week. So, Still in the hospital? No, no, no. He has been uh, out of the hospital for two weeks. Okay. He went to live in a hotel. Oh, the one over by Clifford and 820. I should know the name, but... So Damien is out of the hospital, okay. but still very much in need of our prayers. So for Damien Hernandez, Lord in thy mercy. Yes. Um, I, was, I would like for us to keep in our prayers um, all those that are in the rehabs or nursing homes mm -hmm. in, um, that, that work and stay in rehabs and those that are in um, for, for the elderly and those that are up in age that are in jail or in prison may, uh, may, God, uh, may God bless their health yes for people in nursing homes in rehab hospitals for people who are struggling with their health all over our world Lord in thy mercy Hear our prayers. Amen. any others let us pray most gracious and loving God, we come to this moment to be in communion with you, to experience in our hearts and yes, our spirits, the presence of the living God, who has blessed us with life, who has blessed us with good things health, home, church community, community at large, for all those relationships that allows us to support one another and help each other in our daily living, we are thankful, God. On this evening, we come with our hearts open, our wills willing to listen to your voice, to your message, to your word, leading us, instructing us, building us. We are thankful, O oh God. For this, your church, at Western Hills United Methodist Church, we ask your blessings. For the community that assembles in our parking lot to play every afternoon, Sometimes coming in for water or using the services, we are thankful for them, oh God. For people who are involved with the Las Vegas Trail Love, people who want to make a difference, not only in the world, but in the communities in which we live, we are thankful. For the food that came this week in droves, we are thankful. For people in our church who volunteer in the pantry, people like Jerry and Anna Fry, Karen Leach,
duty, Ben Rosenbeek, we are so thankful, oh God, for their participation and for their contribution in making a difference in the lives of others. On this night, take our time, take our spirit, mold us, oh God, to thy image lead us in the way that leads to life eternal. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Brother Bible. But I, all I need is the Bible. The Bible, I believe, is in the kitchen. Psalm 147. Yes. New Revised Standard. Yes. Yes. The beauty of the Psalms in the hymnal is that the Psalms have always been part of the worship liturgy of God's people. Now in the hymnal, they always come with a choral response. Many times the choral response should sound like a chant. We in our culture are much more attuned with wonderful melodies. So sometimes the chant goes off the wall. <laughs> but, 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 but that's not to say that the scripture that is read isn't loved and cherished. 11 verses of Psalm 147, and this is why they read. Praise the Lord. For it is good to sing praises to our God. A song of praise is fitting. The Lord builds up Jerusalem and gathers the outcasts of Israel. The Lord heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. The Lord determines the number of the stars and gives them all their names. Great is our Lord, and abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. The Lord lifts up the downtrodden, but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody upon the lyre to our God, who covers the heavens with clouds, prepares rain for the earth, makes grass grow on the hills. The Lord gives to the beasts their food and to the young ravens that cry. The Lord takes no delight in the might of a horse, nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in the faithful, in those who hope in the Lord's steadfast love. And I'll read the last verses. The Lord takes no delight in the might of a horse, nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. But the Lord takes pleasure in the faithful, in those who hope in the Lord's steadfast love. May God bless our hearing of all the scripture. Let us pray. Most gracious God, may the proclamation of your word speak to us. And in speaking to us, let our spirits take comfort in recognizing that you're with us. As the message is proclaimed, we pray, O oh God, that it has our name for the glory and greater glory of God. We pray. Amen. 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 Remember last week, the one word in Hebrew 
that says, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Every time we say that word, our hearts, our spirits embody God's praise. Hallelujah. 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 I've been enthralled with a mini series on Channel 13 called Victoria. Enthralled because I've always been enthralled with the English history. And of course, the Victorian years were some of the most celebrated years in English history. A young monarch who was only 18 years old becomes Queen of England at the death of her grandfather. And so the beauty of the character of Victoria is that she is willful. She has, as they say, she has a spirit that is feisty. She has an understanding of how things are to be done. And she also has understanding that she is a woman in a man's world. And in spite of that obstacle, she excels. She excels by being persistent. But when I turn on the TV and I, it's, um, it's recorded so I can watch it at any time, it starts out with the introductions and you hear the soundtrack in the back and the, and, and the sound of the music is hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I have in my office a book of prayers. And one of the prettiest prayers that has been written is the prayer of Elizabeth I upon taking coronation and becoming Queen of England. And in her prayer, she praises God. Victoria does the same. Upon becoming a monarch, she writes a prayer. And in that prayer, she praises God. And as Queen Elizabeth I asks of God wisdom to guide her people, so does Victoria. She prays for wisdom to guide her people. So the question comes, where does power come from? From God. Yes. Just as I was going to say it, he said it. Wonderful. It comes from God. Yes. And God gives us, as human beings, the inclination to look toward heaven, to understand our humanity, and to understand that we only become who we are through God's grace. So hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Excuse me, I have a question. Yes? You said we, we, become, who, who, we become who we are through God's grace? Yes. So like being molded, like clay? Molded, like yes, clay? yes. It, it takes us, our disposition to give of ourselves to God and to be faithful and trustful with God in taking us will make something beautiful. Yes. So in that regard, yes. It's only through God's grace. And you see God's grace in this song. So we'll see how that comes about. One of the joyful readings of this song is the understanding of those who are downtrodden those who are heartbroken, those who endure suffering. And so for people who suffer, the question is, who do you look to? 
Psalm reminds us once again, we look toward God. And sometimes the word hallelujah can work as a mantra that places us on holy ground upon repeating the word hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Even to the point where you allow yourself a disattachment where we kind of we close ourselves to God, but now we have we are opening ourselves to God through praise. Hallelujah. 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 It says that God, the Lord, heals the brokenhearted and winds up their wounds. And listen to this portion. The Lord determines the number of stars and gives them all their names. <clears throat> the beauty or the comparison that we find from this text or the power in this text is that the God creator of the universe who created all there is knows us individually by name. There are many paths in this world only really one Pat Kinlow from Fort Worth, Texas, who's married to Billy, who are the parents of Rebecca, and grandparents to two wonderful boys, Wyatt and Graham. God knows us by name. Great is the Lord, abundant in power, whose understanding is beyond measure. How we wish we knew God's mind in regards to how to deal with situations. It is said that when Jesus Christ came into our world, what makes Jesus Christ so radically different was that many of the expectations of the Messiah people's expectation of the Messiah were turned upside down upon the arrival of Jesus. He sits with sinners. Remember that about Jesus? He relates to drunks. He associates with prostitutes. And yet, that is to say that God goes through extreme measures to connect with us. And goes back to that idea that God, that we stand before God out of God's grace and out of God's mercy. He lifts up the downtrodden but casts the wicked to the ground. And then comes this portion. Sing to the Lord with thanksgiving. Make melody upon the lyre of our God. I, in growing up, thought that I was a good singer. And I still remember one day, well, my father being the minister, he would always have the family sing specials. For some reasons, he would say to my mother, Thora, Dad, you'll sing a special. Come forward and sing a special. And there goes my mother singing a special. Uh, what a friend we have in Jesus, for example. And I remember that when I was about 11 or 12, my voice was changing from the travel to uh, deeper. And uh, I was asked by my father to, uh, to come forward and to come and sing at a Sunday evening service. And we used to tell our dad, Dad, don't put us in those predicaments. Tell us that you want us to sing and we'll prepare. But he would just call and say, come and sing. So here I go. So I said, what song should I sing, Dad? He says, well, 
why don't we sing how great sing how great thou art? So here comes the chorus. Then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee, how great thou art, how great thou art. And every time I had to hit the high notes, <laughs> I wasn't able to hit the high notes. So all of a sudden, in my frustration of that being a, of my high notes cracking, something that had never happened, I just started crying. To which my mother gets up and sings the rest of the hymn with me. Sing songs of thanksgiving. And now that I'm older, I'm in my 60s, my voice is again cracking. <laughs> it has a vibrato that I, it's not intentional. And sometimes, especially at the 9 o'clock service, I said, oh God, I'm going to have to sing. And they're going to have to hear my, my cracking voice. Well, I've come to the conclusion that however my voice sounds, I should sing songs of praise to my God. And if I can't keep up a melody, then I'll sing, uh, oh, what's his name, who, who sings, but almost talks as he sings. 1960s? Frank Sinatra? No, no, he sang beautifully. Cash. Who? Johnny Cash. Well, Johnny Cash was one of those. He was singing, his singing was almost talking. Yes. Well, the... There are times when I even hear, I read the, the lyrics instead of singing them. That's because the voice is no longer there. So, sing songs of thanksgiving to the Lord our God. Sing with the lyre. And that takes us to David. David's life was alive that was, how can I put it? At times he was so, such a, an example of what it meant to have faith in God, and at other times he just messed it up so bad. Some of the Psalms depict his confession of sin. In the 51st says to God, have mercy upon me, O God. Have mercy upon me. No one sinned worse than David, and yet no one proclaimed and acclaimed God better than David too. He covers the clouds, prepares the rain for the earth, makes the grass grow up on the hills. The Lord gives to the beasts their foods and to the young ravens that cry. And then the way that it ends says something special about our God. It says that God sees us as we are. And as we are, God invites us to be in relationship with this mighty God. He takes no delight in the might of a horse nor pleasure in the strength of a runner. But look at whom he takes pleasure. But the Lord takes pleasure in the faithful, in those who hope in the Lord's steadfast love. On those who hope on the Lord's steadfast love. And steadfastness is the way that the psalmist loves to describe God's love for us. It is a love that will not let us go. Even when we sin, God continues wanting to be our God. Even when we disobey and are unfaithful, God remains faithful. Yes. Um, in another in another part of the psalm in the psalms, I don't know where it's at. I don't know word for word, but it says that the, the Lord probes our heart. Yes, yes, and He knows our heart. Yes, He knows our intentions. Yes, He knows our thinking. He knows 
where we're coming from. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So how do we end tonight? We we'll end by giving God thanks for taking us as the songs we have sung tonight say, taking us just as we are. And that just as we are, with no pretension, and uh, as horrible as life or our actions can be, God welcomes us. And we praise God, <coughs> going back to that initial question of yours, for His grace that we are who we are only through God's grace. Thanks be to God. Amen. I love this moving communion table. <laughs> Let us take time in a moment of silence to focus on the event of sharing in this holy communion, in this holy Eucharist. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Jesus said, I am the vine. Jesus said, I have come so that you may have life and so that you may have it abundantly. Christ our Lord invites to this table all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. For on the night in which Jesus gave himself for us, he took bread, gave thanks, broke the bread, offered it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, <coughs> gave thanks, offered it to his disciples saying, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. As often as you drink from this cup, do it in remembrance of me. So we pray, send forth, O God, your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here and upon these gifts of bread and cup. Make them be for us the body and the blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory are yours, Almighty God, now and forever. Amen. And now, because we are children of God, let us join our voices in prayer as we pray the Lord's Prayer. Together we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Terry, would you come? Amy, would you come?